This is Reed Scott. You know him from a million different things. The longest IMDb page in history, including, of course, his eight seasons on Veep, from the Venom movies, from Late Night, from so many other things, including a bunch of things that you have out right now. He is an actor, a writer, a producer right now. Let's, uh, let's get into it. You've got a new movie out called Wildflower. You have another movie out right now called Who Invited Charlie? And you are all over the fifth and final season of Marvelous Mrs. Maisel returning to the role of Gordon Ford. Let's get into it, Reid. Okay, let's start with Wildflower. Yeah. This is a really special extraordinary movie about a young woman being raised by neurodivergent parents and it's based on the director's family yeah. and real life. Tell me a little bit about how you got involved in it and what this story is and who you are in this family. I, uh, I actually play a semi-fictionalized version of the director, Matt Smuckler. This is, this is very much his family's story and I read the script and it was just, it was so refreshing in that it was it was so authentic down to earth uh compelling story obviously you know the, the the young woman like you said raising her two neurodivergent parents and i had a phone call with matt and him relaying his his real life experience with this situation it just really brought it all home for me and he expressed to me too that the, you know that this movie is obviously got a lot of heart but there's they wanted to really capture the subtle nuances and humor that exist within a family and often, you know, how families in crisis can sign, sort of use some humor to kind of bolster themselves. And I love that because I, I do, you know, a lot of my career has been in the comedy space and I, I love finding opportunities to sort of inject some softness, some lightness into those sort of dark areas that we got to explore in the movie. And the, the, the cast was just amazing, amazing cast to work with. Right, I mean, you want to talk about a movie that is, is sweet, um, and has a lot of heart, but also, just let's run through some of the people who are in this cast with you. It's yeah. just, it's just he comedy heavy hitters all the way down. Oh my God, Brad Garrett is like a sort of hero of mine that I got to work with years ago. Um, he is amazing in every single thing he does. I got reunited with my my good buddy Alex Daddario. We did uh, a series together. Um, oh God, who else? Gene uh, Smart. Gene Smart. Oh my God, the incredible Gene Smart. Jackie Weaver. Jackie Weaver is hilarious, by the way. Oh my, the, the stories, she had us captivated. Like the only thing that was missing was like a bottle of tequila and a campfire. You just wanted to just sort of sit there and just drink Jackie Weaver in all day. And Kieran Chipka was just amazing. Like she can kind of do anything. So it was a really fun cast to work with. Everybody brought something so unique. We all worked so well together. And this was a true, like every movie I do, really, a, a, an independent film labor of love. Everybody was there because they loved the material. And this is a story because it is comedic, but is also looking at a neurodivergent family, mm -hmm. looking at these characters. That is a very sensitive line to walk. It is. And I know that there was a consultant on the film, and, and I want to know how did, how did you all work together to make sure that you kept it funny, that mm -hmm. you kept it an entertaining movie, which is why people want to see a movie in the first place, but also gave it that representation, gave it that authenticity and that depth? Yeah, well, I mean, they cast it authentically, which was really, really important to the film. So the, the, the young woman playing um, Bee's mother, uh, is neurodivergent and she was fantastic and it was so fun because she was it, it was her first real professional acting job and she's so sweet and so I mean very very intent on delivering a great performance and it kind of it energized all of us because we really sort of like rallied around her to try to you know help her you know feel safe and you know accepted and uh, and, and bolstered by all of us and she gave really a, a beautiful performance for her, her, her first performance. And it also, th th to bring that real level of authenticity, it helps all of us on set. And also that's just the way to tell the story. I mean, the, the, there are certain things, you know, in Hollywood that you can sort of, you know, get away with, but that was something that I don't think anybody was interested in, in you know, fudging or, or stretching. And I'm so glad they didn't because it, it, it made the movie what it is. And it wasn't, you know, born out of a place of, you know, how do we capture the headline? It was that she was the best actress for the job because what she brought to it, no one else could ever possibly match. Yeah, it's really, it's a really beautiful performance yeah. and it's a really beautiful ensemble. It is. And 
Okay, you've got some other things going on. Very different Very is different. is Who Invited Charlie. Oh, yeah. Is a, a pandemic comedy, I guess you could call it, with Adam Pally mm -hmm. and you, kind of. And it really, um, well, you're a producer, and I don't even know where to start because it really, to me, feels like a throwback movie in so many ways. Even the poster for it, the opening credits for it, the animated credits for it, but it takes place during the, the early, the begins in March of, well, it begins the December before, but it begins in the early days of the pandemic, and it has this kind of mismatched buddy comedy vibe to mm -hmm. it. Tell me about it and why you want it to get involved so closely in this project. It was written by a really good friend of mine. Uh, my friend Nick Scutt is a fantastic writer and we've worked together uh, uh, on a few other projects sort of behind the scenes. And during the pandemic, he and his family moved to Virginia and kind of moved in with some, some close friends to sort of pod up. And he wrote this movie loosely based on his experience there where, where he was kind of the Charlie, he was the loose cannon. And he sent me the script and I just loved it because it, it was unique in that it found a way to broach the subject of the pandemic without making it a, a pandemic movie. It's really not. I mean, th that is the sort of backdrop, but this is a family movie. The, the, the pandemic serves as really nothing more than the catalyst to get these characters sort of to smash into each other. And then one that, once that's established, the pandemic is just, we sort of use it for comedic fodder in the background. Um, but I loved it because every single character in the movie, it's rare to find a, a, a movie like this where every single character changes for the better, really. And in a very, again, sort of genuine way. Uh, Adam and I, he's been a buddy of mine for a long time. We've, we did a movie together, God, a thousand years ago and have been looking for a way to sort of reunite. So we immediately thought of him. And then when Nick and Adam and I were sort of talking about the movies that influenced us and what we were trying to get at, what we were sort of you know paying homage to, you know, planes, trains, and automobiles came up. Um, Uncle Buck, uh, The Great Outdoors, basically anything with John Candy in it, and um, What About Bob? And these were movies that were hugely influential for us coming up, and and they're all sort of you know, fish, uh, you know, odd couple, kind of. I was thinking also um, down and out in Beverly Hills. Oh yeah, trading absolutely. Places. Trading places, yeah. It's that it's that tension. Absolutely, for sure. Yeah, and it, it, it I mean just that classic dynamic. It gives you so much material for comedy, and then Adam and I, we love working together because we just we whip each other up and we we love to improvise. Our director uh, Javier was really very keen on you know keeping the structure there so that we can really push the heart. We didn't want to lose the heart because a lot of times, you know, you get improvising comics and we can kind of just like go all over the place and everything just sort of turns to shit. So we wanted to, to make sure that we didn't lose the heart, we didn't lose the story, but that we kept it alive. And Jordana Brewster was like the sort of, the, the perfect third partner because she really was looking to sort of, you know, stretch and do something comedic and she can run. She is so funny. She's so funny. She's so funny. And I don't think enough people know that about her, but she brought, just all this heart and warmth and elegance to the part. But she also, she could really, she can give as good as she gets. Like in some of our more heavily improvised scenes, she was right there with us. She's very talented. Okay, I wanna talk about the given as good as it gets because when I think of your career or I look back on it when I'm researching to talk to you, you have done a lot of scenes where a woman is yelling at you. <laughs> you have a lot of scenes where women just yell at you. You want to take a turn? You're, Go for it. I have a lot of anger. That yeah, I'm yeah. Just Rage, like, let it out. Dear, you know, the patriarchy is really getting me down, Reed, okay? I really had it with the opportunities for myself and my daughter, and I'm really upset about Dobbs. Yeah. Thank you. Doesn't it feel good? It feels great. Oh my God, you should like have a sideline letting women do this. This would be amazing. <laughs> just me what, on Zoom, you could just like hit me up about, and go out. Like, what is it about these roles, these characters, these guys who then just, I mean, you get yelled at in Maisel. I don't think it's a spoiler because it, it goes without saying if you're on Maisel, you're gonna get yelled at. Oh yeah, a lot of yelling. Um, you, yelled at, you, get yelled, you get yelled at at Veep all, and Veep all the time. What is it that draws you? You see, you see in the script, you're like looking for the part where a woman yells at you. It's funny, I never really thought of it like that. I, I, what, first of all, I, I've been so fortunate to have been able to work with incredible women in this business. And it's really, it's, it's you know, I, I just chalk it up to sheer luck, really, at, at this point. But starting, you know, years and years and years ago, Betsy Thomas and the late, great Jamie Tarsus, you know, really sort of kind of gave me my start. 
And then I got to work with Laura Linney on Big C and then Julia Louis-Dreyfus on Veep. Uh, I just shot a movie with Anne Hathaway. It's like, I, I love working opposite these really strong women. Um, in terms of like the, the, the parts that I'm taking, I, you and I were talking briefly uh, you know, before we started. You know, I, I, I was bullied as a kid and I've always had this chip on my shoulder about that. And it's actually translated into me being attracted to playing those types of characters, the bully types, because I want to service them well and they're like, I want to make, like, you, you have to hate them enough to realize who they are and how dangerous they are and what they sort of represent, not only to you know, the scene, but society at, at, at large and what have you. But you know, they gotta be likable enough that you sort of wanna watch these guys. So Dan was sort of a great example of that. He was a guy that's sort of like, oh my God, I absolutely hate him. I can't wait to play this guy. Because he was just so sleazy. But there's obviously, you know, I, I, I like to give him, you know, I thought of Dan as, as the kind of guy that this is all for show. That somehow he's like a broken little boy inside. And because he's such a, you know, kind of scumbag, uh, he's going to get yelled at. And I think he likes it because I think he, that's, you know, the whole backstory we gave him. It's like, oh, that's the relationship that he had with his mother. You know, his, his mommy yelled at him a lot, so that's he his, sets himself up to be yelled at a lot. That's his love language. That's his love language. Is being yelled at. Yeah, screaming. Is screaming. And, you know, you talk about Veep, and then I see you, and I watch what you were doing this season on, on Maisel. That level of writing, there are very few shows that have that kind of Veep level or Amy Sherman Palladino, where it's like yeah. this. Yeah, and yet so different, too, because yes. Amy Sherman Palladino and Dan Palladino are two of the most brilliant writers I've ever worked with, and everything is meticulously crafted. Like, and and they, they expect the performances to be word perfect, and they're right. Because they, you know, Amy, she was a, a choreographer and a, and, and a dancer before her brilliant career as a writer and director and producer. So there's a, a musicality written in and baked into every single line. And you start to realize, and it was a shift for me, coming from, from Veep, which is also incredibly well written, but also very improvised, and that we wanted to make it messy, like you never hit a mark, you never said the same line the same way twice. Moving from that to Maisel, where everything was, you know, hit that mark perfectly, the camera lands perfectly, say this line perfectly, it was a challenge for me to sort of get up to speed with this, you know, that amazing cast. But it was, it was so fun, and you saw very instantly, it's like, oh, you, it has to be this way because every episode is its own little opera, really. And I think the episodes from this season, you know, they, they sort of give me a sneak peek at a bunch of them, and they are just, they're incredible. They're absolutely incredible. It's some of the most cinematic television I've ever seen. And just the way everything is working in concert between the way the camera moves and like the beautiful sets and the beautiful costumes and the language, it just, it really, it was special, really yeah. special. And you have, this is, this, you are returning yet again to the world of late night, a character yeah. who is in that, in that milieu or behind a desk in some way. I just want to ask you one more thing, which is how do you prepare for it? You, like, you're the guy that we want to see coming out from behind that curtain. And that curtain is so Johnny Carson, it's so Carson. I want to know, like, how did you, what did you, you've been the guest so many times on so many talk shows. Yeah. What did you do to be the guy who's the host? I, I did a fair amount of research. I was, um, like you said, my, my character in Veep, at one point he becomes a, a, a morning talk show host, and then I worked on Late Night with, with Mindy Kaling. Granted, my character was a, a, a writer on that. And so with this, it's like, okay, I, I know a fair enough uh, about the character and the world, but I, I need to know more, so I devoured every book I could get my hands on. You know, Jack Parr, Johnny Carson, like the real sort of, you know, you know, forefathers of that genre. And then I reached out to some, you know, some modern day late night hosts and really sort of picked their brain. Like, um, you know, Stephen Colbert was incredibly helpful. And I think the thing that he was more, most interested in, in, in talking to me about, because it wasn't really more about like mimicking the performance when he's at the desk or at the chair. That I sort of felt like I ha had a handle on. It's like, I wanted to know about everything that goes on behind the scenes. And not that what he told me necessarily made it into the show, but it got me into the headspace of what it's like, because you really are, you, you, your mind is so split in that job. Because you, you have your home life, of course, then you're running a writer's room, you're also running a business, because you're dealing with, you know, in this case, like the network and ad execs and all that kind of stuff. 
Um, and then you're also putting another persona forward to the audience at home. And that was so interesting. It was almost like this, this double duality and, and how you're juggling all these sides of your personality because of this one really unique job that if you think about it, I mean, maybe they only like a few dozen people have ever held that position in America as you know, preeminent late night host. Uh, so it was really fun to sort of do that research and dive in. And then like everything else in Maisel, they, they made it easy because they built a full size set for the, the, the late night show with a, with a full 150 extra audience. So I had you know, all these people to sort of really interact with. It was, it was incredible. Yeah, it's the show within the show. Yeah. Okay, you've got a bunch of other stuff coming up. I have to ask you about, you got a movie coming out with Anne Hathaway. Everybody's really excited about yeah. that. You've got a couple other things. Tell me what you've got, what you, what you've got next. Uh, God, so, uh, at the moment I'm uh, shooting something for, well, it's probably a little premature to say, for, for ABC. Uh, we'll see how that goes. It's still the sort of pilot stage. Yeah, but it's, it's a lot of fun. I'm working with Sarah Shahi, who I think is fantastic, and one of my favorite directors, Paul McGuigan. Uh, yeah, the movie uh, with Anne Hathaway, The Idea of You. Uh, we shot that down in Atlanta just before Christmas, which was so much fun, and she was amazing to work with, and it was a family comedy, and you know, I know my place. I play, I play a prick in that movie as well, um, because that's, that's where I'm headed in my career. <laughs> Um, yeah, my, this is why my kids have seen nothing that I've done. But you're a great prick. Well, thank you so much. You're a great thank prick. Thank you so much. Reed Scott, fantastic prick. The man women want to yell at. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, likewise.